Today, uh, I'm going to talk about, as you said, functional rehabilitation of the cervical spine, and specifically um, what we call the Pettibon Postural Correction and Rehabilitation Program, which hopefully will bring uh, kind of a unique light to how we address it. Essentially, this is an active therapy program that really has a focus on both postural correction and restoration of function through three primarily primary protocols. The first of which, we're looking to restore the lateral curves of the spine. The second, we look to really kind of eliminate any lateral deviations in the A to P spine. And then ultimately, we look to uh, address the spine by doing some active strengthening with a real emphasis on a home care program so that we can get, uh, not only maintain a high level of correction, but have the patient be able to do it independently from us. The three phases of care that we look for, of course, we start with acute care, where we want to improve their function and reduce their pain. But then we get into, in corrective care, more of a, a restoration of the soft tissues, really focusing on both the discs and the ligaments. And then ultimately, in the rehabilitation phase, we're looking for more long-term lasting correction through strengthening the muscles. So when a patient comes in, the first thing we look at is, how are they functioning? And from a mechanical standpoint, we look, you know, how's their, how's their range of motion? Not just globally and regionally, but oftentimes we find where it looks like they have good regional range of motion, that at the segmental level, they'll have some hypomobilities or some hypermobilities. And those issues need to be addressed separately, but can definitely play into how well the cervical spine is functioning. We also look for a good cervical lordosis or a good cervical curve. When we have a good curve, we have a, typically a more stable structure. We've got better biomechanics. And of course, normal or good biomechanics really help to support normal neurological function. Um, Dr. Alf Gregg, who's a neurosurgeon from, I believe, Sweden, did some work on this. And what he found was that when there's a good curve in the neck or good lordosis, that the spinal cord hangs in a more of a relaxed position without tension on it. And when you have a reduction of that curve or a kyphosis, that you can actually get a tremendous amount of stretching on the cord and into the nerve roots themselves, which of course can have some different neurological consequences. So when patients come in, of course, they present in all different kinds of um, ways. And, and here's obviously three examples of uh, three different patients. We see here uh, in A, we've got what we call a, an S-curve, you know, the lower lordosis at the top of the spine, and then the kyphosis at the bottom. We see the reverse S-curve in the second picture of B, and then just a, a gentle kyphosis in the third, in the third uh, x-ray here. Each of these obviously do not have, this, do not have the proper um, mechanics or motion that you would get if you have a good lordosis in the spine. And when you alter uh, the biomechanics, you change the stress points tremendously on those individual joints. And instead of each of the, uh, the bones in the, spine, in the cervical spine sharing the load and carrying their own weight, a lot of that stress gets uh, put on certain segments. You can see down here in the, in the, lower, um, in the lower aspect of uh, C5-6, C6-7, that with that added stress over time, it starts to break down and degenerate much more rapidly. You can see it in the form of the bone spurs, the osteophytes, the degenerative discs. And while, of course, a lot of these kinds of uh, situations or um, conditions can arise out of trauma, like a car accident or sports injuries, there's other um, aspects in our society that play a big role as well. Obviously, we know with the amount of time people spend at computers, you know, yeah, with uh, um, the amount of time people spend at computers, um, we see this kind of uh, postural issues again and again. And while ergonomics can be very helpful in this manner, um, if you're sitting 40, 60, or even 80 hours a week, like many people do at Microsoft and Amazon, the ergonomics alone are not going to either prevent this or correct this when it's, when it's happening. Ultimately, what this tends to result in is what we call the forward head syndrome, where you see you get this anterior carriage of the head. And you know, while the head weighs about 8 to 10 pounds, um, we'll go with 12 since uh, uh, that picture shows that. Um, for every inch forward you go into a forward head syndrome, since we're losing our mechanical advantage, um, it's like adding an additional 10 pounds of weight to the head. 
And the farther you go forward, the more stress and tension not only can it put on the cord, but it can put on the lower neck as well as the upper back. And since gravity is the one constant we're always dealing with, as you start to go forward, it's just a matter of time before you continue to progress through that naturally. And as a result, your body has to try and adapt to it. Eventually, as you get farther and farther forward, you start adapting with your lower back and your lower spine and can create other co compensatory problems due to this simple situation. Another thing we run into is what was, you know, we've been calling the text neck syndrome or tech neck syndrome. This is a term that's been kind of thrown around over the last few years because not only are we now sitting in front of our computers, but worse, we have our smart devices where we can sit there and look down even farther and create this much more rapidly. And we run into the same phenomena of the forward head syndrome. We create these same conditions. But unfortunately, not only are we all doing it ourselves here at this stage, but we're seeing it a lot in younger kids. You know, as soon as they get their little video games or their, their iPhones or whatever, and we're seeing it in, I, I'm a father of two, and in both middle school and high school, we're seeing it rampantly all over the place. So something that definitely needs to be addressed. So how do we address this? Well, from a really simplistic uh, point of view, we look, if, it's t if we find tissues that are too tight, we try to loosen them. An example would that be if we see fixations in the spine, we'll do spinal adjustments to loosen them. If we have muscle spasms through the rehab, we'll try to relax those muscles. On the other side of that, when we find tissues that are too loose, we try to tighten it. When we find a weakness or instability, we want to strengthen and stabilize those areas. And we'll show you how we do that. As a chiropractor, spinal adjusting is one of my primary tools that I use. But what I find is I do all my adjusting in conjunction with the rehabilitation therapy. We always like to first warm the soft tissues up before the adjustments. And then we do post rehab after the adjustments. And when we do our rehab, it's a progressive program. So we start simply and we build on it until we get the level of correction that we're looking for. Ultimately, we put the patients on a maintenance exercise program so that they, they can sustain those corrections on their own, again, independently. So when a patient comes to my office, again, we do warm ups. We'll check them then for see if they need any uh, areas that need to be adjusted. We'll get right into strengthening to kind of lock in those changes and then give them their home protocols. So by warm ups, there's three primary ways that we look to warm the spine up. One, we do some, have the patient do some assisted stretching. We actually have an assisted strap where they can put it around their head, pull it down underneath their leg and kind of give them a little um, extra leverage there. And that way we can start to loosen up any splinted and guarded muscles. And we do this in six primary ways. So typically 45 degrees, forward on each side, laterally, and then 45 degrees back. And in doing this, again, it really helps to loosen up those splinted and guarded muscles so we can change those, the memory back to a, a normal functional um, muscle. What we find too is very oftentimes with a forward head syndrome or a cervical problem, we also will have um, an upper thoracic issue. And for that, a lot of times we'll use the foam roller or a thoracic roll. And while that can be very effective, we find if we can actually loosen up the neck muscles first, that we get even more benefit from using those, the thoracic roll. That leads us right into our second mode, which is cervical traction. This particular um, traction unit um, is very effective, and it was really designed so that the traction can be done while maintaining the lordosis in the spine which for us is, is pretty important since we're looking for that curb correction. We also find that it's a very safe unit and the amount of traction pressure that's put in there is directly controlled by the patient at all times. It's typically mounted either on a wall in my office or it hangs over a door for a home unit and the patient simply bends their knees and bends down until they have the level of pressure that, that they're comfortable with. We have them hold it for a couple seconds, come back up for a second, go back down for a couple seconds, and we'll have them cycle through this about 30 to 60 times. And part of the goal is not only to stretch the soft tissues, but the discs themselves um, have a, a gel inside that when it's cold, 
it's very firm. And when you warm it up, it, it'll actually soften and become uh, more pliable so that in the future when we do any adjustments that need to be done, if the muscles are relaxed and the discs are, are warm and more pliable, it's much easier to provide a safe and effective adjustment as well as it's much more comfortable for the patient. Hmm. All right. Um, in addition, um, here's a little picture where we actually have the home unit. You can see it's, it's hung over a door so that they can do it at home and then they can put it back in a drawer when they have friends over. Um, but essentially when we, again, we can warm up the tissues, it makes it uh, very easy to adjust them with very little um, chance of any kind of injury or straining as well. The third phase of uh, the warm-up is we use what we call the PTLMS, which is basically stands for the Pedibon Tendon Ligament and Muscle Stimulator. Essentially, it's a high-packed massage tool that is very effective at warming up the tendons and ligaments and muscles. It also helps to um, increase the blood flow and remove any more of that splinting and guarding in the muscles, particularly along the spine. It's very comfortable and really helps in particularly those acute phases to really reduce the pain and, and patients tend to appreciate it quite a bit. A couple other benefits of the PTLMS is it can also be used in, pretty much in a number of different parts of the body. We can use it in frozen shoulder, um, if there's TMJ issues with the muscular component. Um, I've used it on a number of patients with plantar fasciitis and it really, within even just four to six visits, you can make substantial gains. Then we come to, uh, once they're warmed up, we get into the spinal adjusting. And so at this point, we'll do our postural checks and our, our assessments on visit to visit to see, one, do they require any adjustments today? And if so, where? We don't just adjust everyone every time, or we just assess that on a visit to visit basis. And as we get later on in through the care with the rehab, a lot of the adjusting will actually come through the post rehab, which we'll talk about here in a moment. When we do adjusting, of course, we're looking to restore proper mechanics, reduce symptoms, and restore function. While I prefer myself to be adjusted manually, and while I do a number of manual adjustments, we also have a number of different instruments that we'll use in certain situations to adjust the spine. The instruments are nice because we can put a very specific force in a very specific segment or area of the spine in a controlled manner, and it's fast enough that the muscles won't react to it. So the patient can sit in a nice relaxed position and we can do a very specific adjustment in a very comfortable way. Um, it's also um, what we find too on occasion, we'll get patients that may come in and maybe they're a little apprehensive to either have their neck twisted or to hear just the sound associated with adjusting. And so again, this offers another really effective way to work on them in a way that keeps them happy and comfortable. Most patients, when they come into my office, my goal is to do everything I can to correct their condition and help them, but I also want them to enjoy the experience. And everyone's a little different as far as how we go about that. Another instrument we use is what we call the negative Z adjusting instrument. Essentially what this is, it's a, it's a instrument that has kind of a small dropping mechanism. And this is specifically designed for the cervical spine. It can help to unlock the lower cervical spine, particularly when we have those kyphotic necks or where they have a, a loss of the curve. But it, what it's really helpful for too is very often times we'll find that the skull can get locked in either extension or flexion on the atlas. And when we're dealing with uh, the forward head syndrome we talked about, one of the big challenges there is when that skull gets locked. A lot of times if it gets more common than not, it'll get locked in extension. And when it gets locked in extension, our body will adapt using its riding reflexes and kind of bring us down into more of that forward head type posture. And the body has a hard time coming out of it. If we can unlock that, that skull on the atlas, the body will adapt and come back into a, a more normalized posture much more easily. Here's an example of a patient where they came in, we did an x-ray on them, they had their atlas or their skull was kind of stuck and fixated. 
we unlocked it and then the post x-ray the body just was able to come back into more of a normalized lordosis not a full lordosis but it came back where it wasn't resisting itself because of the fixation so once all the adjustments are done we get into the posture waiting, which is really part of the unique aspect of, of this particular kind of rehab. As you can see, this lovely lady is wearing a head weight, a shoulder weight, and a hip weight. And this kind of approach is what we call um, reactive adjusting. Essentially, when a patient comes in, if their posture is distorted, we're going to, again, warm them up, soften their tissues. We're going to do any adjustments, but then we're going to specifically put the weights on them in a configuration that will cause their body to adapt and straighten out into a more appropriate posture. And so they're actually reactively adjusting themselves. The nice thing about that is while they're wearing the weights, they're actually getting an isometric contraction of those postural muscles. So long term, they're stabilizing and building strength into that new posture to hold indefinitely. We, of course, make it a little more fun. We throw some dynamic exercises at them while they're wearing these posture weights um, on the wobble chair, wobble board, just some things to kind of challenge them, usually with their balance. And ultimately, these weights, um, we have them as part of their home program where they'll do them at home. We typically have them wear the weights uh, twice a day for 20 minutes, so it's a little labor intensive, but that will ensure the correction much faster. Now, of course, how much weight we use and where we put the weights is very specific. Um, very oftentimes we'll use four to six pounds, but oftentimes I'll even use as little as one or two pounds. And the amount of correction you get from that is, is uh, actually pretty remarkable. So here's an example of a, a lateral cervical x-ray where a patient first comes in. You can see that they have not an ideal curve. In fact, they actually have, again, an S-curve with the kyphosis at the bottom. And you can see from the red line right here, they also have what we call that forward head syndrome, the anterior head carriage. So in this case, we simply put a four pound weight on their head. We have them wobble for 10 minutes. And this is how their body naturally responds. We take an x-ray after. They've actually gone back to more of a lordosis. In this case, they've actually overcorrect a little bit. So we just reduce the weight. We also find that the forward head syndrome has actually come back. So the body is actually able to come back. So from a reactive adjusting standpoint, this is part of the independent program and, and why it can be really effective because we can show the patients how to do this. And instead of continually coming into the office, most of this work in the later stages can be done at home. Another example of a patient, we put weights on them and they improve from a kyphosis back to a partial lordosis. Uh, usually from here, when we do this kind of a stress test, we can v very definitively say, if you do the program, we can take you at least to here. And usually after about three months, we can take them from that hypolordosis even farther back to correction. The very last part of this uh, rehab program is what we call spinal molding. And essentially what we do with spinal molding is we take these high density foam cushions and at first we just have them lay on these in bed. Since gravity is continuously pulling down on us this way, when we lie down, the orientation of gravity is different. It's actually pulling this way. So by putting the fulcrums underneath their neck and their back, gravity will help to bend and mold those proper curves into the spine. In addition to, if you've been in a, again, a forward head sy syndrome or, or poor posture, initially when you try to lie on them, there's going to be a little bit of muscular resistance to it. So allowing yourself to gently relax into it over time is very helpful. And once patients can do this effortlessly for 20 minutes a night, we actually raise them up a little bit. And then we stretch them a little bit more. By the second week, we start them on a series of core strengthening exercises because while we want them to have good core strength, we really want that core strength to be built around the proper curves of the spine. So we go through a basic, intermediate, and then eventually advanced series of core strengthening. And um, that is pretty much what the program looks like. Thank you very much. Great.